Welcome back. We are now looking at the Moonlight Sonata, and this is the first of two videos on the Moonlight Sonata, covering some of the techniques and some approaches to learning the piece. First off, congratulations. You have done an amazing job to get this far in the book. This is our grand finale, and it's a wonderful, piece that you will have that you can play for yourself, for family and friends. And this is the first movement of the Moonlight Sonata. And um, you're probably familiar with it. So a few things to mention right off the bat. We are in the key of C sharp minor. So we're going to have an F sharp, a G sharp, a C sharp, and a D sharp in the key signature. Now, Beethoven moves around a lot in this piece. So we're going to have a lot of natural notes, a lot of sharps, a lot of flats, but your home base will be C sharp minor like that. Now, the first thing that I'd like to talk to you about is how to approach this piece. It's a little bit like a big, piece of pizza or a big cake, we want to try to go just one slice at a time rather than gobbling the whole thing uh, up at once. It's That's a little bit hard to manage. So it's a good idea to go in one measure sections, two measure sections, four measure sections, something like that, and then piece them together. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to approach learning the fingerings and just getting an overall sense of the piece. And to do this, we're going to play each measure or each beat actually even better as a chord. Now, there is a triplet motion throughout the piece like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Those are triplets, but we can play those three notes. That's the first, those are the first three notes of the piece in the right hand as a chord. That is actually a C sharp minor chord in what's called second inversion. If you're curious about the music theory behind that term, you can look to our book called Piano Scales, Chords, Arpeggios, Lessons, which has a lot of information on music theory for piano and also technique, scales, chords, and arpeggios, hence the title. So we don't have uh, the space to go into that too much in detail here, but we just know that that is a type of a C-sharp minor chord right there, played one note at a time. So instead of playing That's the first measure in the right hand. Instead of doing that, you can play, as you're studying the piece, you can play it as this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Then try the left hand alone. And that's just going to be a C sharp, two C sharp notes in octaves. And we'll hold that. For four beats, that's going to be a whole note, like this. One, two, three, four. Now, if you put that both together and just play chords for the first, uh, for each beat, it will sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four two, three, and you can, once you have that down, you can play the actual piece as it's written for that measure, which would be like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And the same would hold true for the second measure. You could, it has the same C sharp minor chord and second inversion. So you could play that when you're first learning this, 
measure, play it as a chord and take those triplets all together as one beat. One, two, three. And then play the left hand, which are two B uh, notes in octave. And you'll hold that for four beats. And then together, as uh, with the previous measure, this kind of intermediary step, you'll play the right hand as quarter notes while counting in your mind or out loud the triplets. It will sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And then when you put it all together, it will sound like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. So that's a great way to proceed going measure by measure through most of the piece. I'll see you in the next lesson.